Section seven of Hero and Leander. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Geeson. Hero and Leander by Christopher Marlowe and George Chapman. Section seven. The third Sestiad, part two. Sweet Hero left upon her bed alone her maidenhead her vows leander gone and nothing with her but a violent crew of new-come thoughts that yet she never knew even to herself a stranger was much like the iberian city that war's hand did strike by english force in princely essex guide when peace assured her towers had fortified and golden-fingered india had bestowed such wealth on her that strength and empire flowed into her turrets and her virgin waist the wealthy girdle of the sea embraced till our leander that made mars his cupid for soft love suits with iron thunders chid swum to her town dissolved her virgin zone led in his power and made confusion run through her streets amazed that she supposed she had not been in her own walls enclosed but rapt by wonder to some foreign state seeing all her issue so disconsolate and all her peaceful mansions possessed with war's just spoil and many a foreign guest from every corner driving an enjoyer supplying it with power of a destroyer so fared fair hero in the expuned fort of her chaste bosom and of every sort strange thoughts possessed her ransacking her breast for that that was not there her wonted rest she was a mother straight and bore with pain thoughts that spake straight and wished their mother slain she hates their lives and they their own and hers such strife still grows where sin the race prefers love is a golden bubble full of dreams that waking breaks and fills us with extremes she mused how she could look upon her sire and not show that without that was entire for as a glass is an inanimate eye and outward forms embraceth inwardly so is the eye an animate glass that shows in forms without us and as phoebus throws his beams abroad though he in clouds be closed still glancing by them till he find opposed a loose and roared vapour that is fit to vent his searching beams and useth it to form a tender twenty-coloured eye cast in a circle round about the sky so when our fiery soul our body's star that ever is in motion circular conceives a form in seeking to display it through all our cloudy parts it doth convey it forth at the eye as the most pregnant place and that reflects it round about the face and this event uncourtly hero thought her inward guilt would in her looks have wrought 
for yet the world's stale cunning she resisted to bear foul thoughts yet forge what looks she listed and held it for a very silly slight to make a perfect metal counterfeit glad to disclaim herself proud of an art that makes the face a panda to the heart those be the painted moons whose lights profane beauty's true heaven at full still in their wane those be the lapwing faces that still cry here tis when that they vow is nothing nigh base fools when every moorish fool can teach that which men think the height of human reach but custom that the apoplexy is of bedrid nature and lives led amiss and takes away all feeling of offence yet brazed not hero's brow with impudence and this she thought most hard to bring to pass to seem in countenance other than she was as if she had two souls one for the face one for the heart and that they shifted place as either list to utter or conceal what they conceived or as one soul did deal with both affairs at once keeps and ejects both at an instant contrary effects retention and ejection in her powers being acts alike for this one vice of ours that forms the thought and sways the countenance rules both our motion and our utterance these and more grave conceits toiled hero's spirits for though the light of her discoursive wits perhaps might find some little hole to pass through all these worldly cinctures yet alas there was a heavenly flame encompassed her her goddess in whose fane she did prefer her virgin vows from whose impulsive sight she knew the black shield of the darkest night could not defend her nor wit's subtlest art this was the point pierced hero to the heart who heavy to the death with a deep sigh and hand that languished took a robe was nigh exceeding large and of black cypress made in which she sate hid from the day in shade even over head and face down to her feet her left hand made it at her bosom meet her right hand leaned on her heart bowing knee wrapped in unshapeful folds twas death to see her knee stayed that and that her falling face each limb helped other to put on disgrace no form was seen where form held all her sight but like an embryon that saw never light or like a scorched statue made a coal with three-winged lightning or a wretched soul muffled with endless darkness she did sit the night had never such a heavy spirit yet might a penetrating eye well see how fast her clear tears melted on her knee through her black veil and turned as black as it mourning to be her tears then wrought her wit with her broke vow her goddess wrath her fame 
all tools that enginous despair could frame which made her strew the floor with her torn hair and spread her mantle piecemeal in the air like jove's son's club strong passion struck her down and with a piteous shriek enforced her swoon her shriek made with another shriek ascend the frighted matron that on her detend and as with her own cry her sense was slain so with the other it was called again she rose and to her bed made forced way and laid her down even where leander lay and all this while the red sea of her blood ebbed with leander but now turned the flood and all her fleet of spirits came swelling in with child of sail and did hot fight begin with those severe conceits she too much marked and here leander's beauties were embarked he came in swimming painted all with joys such as might sweeten hell his thought destroys all her destroying thoughts she thought she felt his heart in hers with her contentions melt and chide her soul that it could so much err to check the true joys he deserved in her her fresh heat blood cast figures in her eyes and she supposed she saw in neptune's skies how her star wandered washed in smarting brine for her love's sake that with immortal wine should be embathed and swim in more heart's ease than there was water in the cestian seas then said her cupid prompted spirit shall i sing moans to such delightsome harmony shall slick-tongued fame patched up with voices rude the drunken bastard of the multitude begot when father judgment is away and gossip-like says because others say takes news as if it were too hot to eat and spits it slavering forth for dog-fee's meat make me for forging a fantastic vow presume to bear what makes grave matrons bow good vows are never broken with good deeds for then good deeds were bad vows are but seeds and good deeds fruits even those good deeds that grow from other stocks than from the observed vow that is a good deed that prevents a bad had i not yielded slain myself i had hero leander is leander hero such virtue love hath to make one of two if then leander did my maidenhead get leander being myself i still retain it we break chaste vows when we live loosely ever but bound as we are we live loosely never two constant lovers being joined in one yielding to one another yield to none we know not how to vow till love unblind us and vows made ignorantly never bind us too true it is that when tis gone men hate the joys as vain they took in love's estate but that since they have lost the heavenly light should show them way to judge of all things right when life is gone death must implant his terror as death is foe to life 
so love to error before we love how range we through this sphere searching the sundry fancies hunted here now with desire of wealth transported quite beyond our free humanity's delight now with ambition climbing falling towers whose hope to scale our fear to fall devours now wrapped with pastimes pomp all joys impure in things without us no delight is sure but love with all joys crowned within doth sit o oh, goddess pity love and pardon it thus spake she weeping but her goddess ear burned with too stern a heat and would not hear ay me hath heaven's straight fingers no more graces for such as hero than for homeliest faces yet she hoped well and in her sweet conceit weighing her arguments she thought them weight and that the logic of leander's beauty and them together would bring proofs of duty and if her soul that was a skilful glance of heaven's great essence found such imperance in her love's beauties she had confidence jove loved him too and pardoned her offence beauty in heaven and earth this grace doth win it supples rigour and it lessens sin thus her sharp wit her love her secrecy trooping together made her wonder why she should not leave her bed and to the temple her health said she must live her sex dissemble she viewed leander's place and wished he were turned to his place so his place were leander ay me said she that love's sweet life and sense should do it harm my love had not gone hence had he been like his place o oh, blessed place image of constancy thus my love's grace parts nowhere but it leaves something behind worth observation he renowns his kind his motion is like heaven's orbicular for where he once is he is ever there this place was mine leander now tis thine thou being myself then it is double mine mine and leander's mine leander's mine oh see what wealth it yields me nay yields him for i am in it he for me doth swim rich fruitful love that doubling self-estates elixir-like contracts though separates dear place i kiss thee and do welcome thee as from leander ever sent to me end of section seven recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey